Hi, Mark Spencer from Ripple Training here with a very quick tip on how to use the 3D text effect from Ripple Tools. First of all, you want to go to the Titles browser in Final Cut Pro 10, and then select the Ripple Tools category, and the very first tool in here is 3D text. Um, now to apply it, you can either drag it over a clip like this, and once you drag it, you can you know change this, the size of it, move it around. But what I really prefer to do, if I want it to cover a clip exactly, I'll move the playhead over that clip, I'll press the X key, that sets a range for that clip, I'll select the RT3D text effect and hit Q, and that will make it exactly match the duration of this clip. Now I'll select it, and in the title inspector over here, we have a bunch of properties, but generally first what I want to do is change what the text says. So you can just double click on it, which will only select one of the words, so I then hit Command A to select everything, and type your text, I'll type Super Jack, for this Jack Russell Terrier, hit Escape, and then I can drag this text anywhere I want on the screen, and I can use the dynamic guides to align it. And then we'll go back to the title inspector. You can see it jumped over the text inspector. Uh, a couple things in here just to point out. Most of it's pretty self-explanatory, but there are some quick tips you can turn on that tells you what to do, uh, some ideas about things to do. That's always accessible. The angle just determines where the extrusion points, kind of what direction it points in. Then the distance is how thick that extrusion is. And by the way, it only goes to 100 if you drag the slider, but if you drag right on the value field, you can make it go much further and make crazy, uh, crazy extruded text right there. But what's kind of neat about this, if you combine this distance parameter with the back size, if we take the back size and make it smaller, kind of get this perspective effect. Now, where this thing points is a little difficult to manage, but the way you change where it points is a combination of the angle. So if I move the angle, you see this moves around. But the other thing that affects it as well is this distance. So if I drag on the distance value, you can see it changes its location as well. It kind of brings it down closer. So I could do something like that by bringing the distance down. So that's a neat kind of thing to do. The other thing is this clipping parameter. So if I drag the clipping parameter, it kind of slices the thing back or allows it to come forward and then slices the back end if I drag to the right. So what you can do is animate this parameter. So what I'd recommend doing for, for a potential animation is set it all the way to zero or actually minus 100, move the playhead back home, set a keyframe for it, move forward in time, then set it to maybe here, right about the middle, so it comes up, and then go forward in time again, and then you can take the clipping and move it somewhere like that. And then if I play through this, we've got a nice little animation where the text comes onto the screen. So a quick way you can animate this. A um, couple other things in here to notice are um, the extrude style. By, by default, let's make this a little bit thicker. Let me back that clipping down a little bit so we get a little thickness so we can see what's going on. The extrude style is shading by default, but if you change it to a gradient, you have access to this gradient editor where you can change the colors here. So let's say we wanted to start it out at kind of a, a light blue and get to a darker blue. So you can kind of change this shading of the extruded part. Now I'll just drag that over and you can see what that looks like there. So that's one thing you can do. Let's close that up. Another thing you can do is change the face. So by default, there's a gradient on the face. And by the way, it says the face fill can be gradient, color, or texture. But what I'd recommend doing is if you want a single color on the face, just open up the face gradient editor here. And you can just remove one of these tags. And now the face is a single color. I'm going to right click on this other tag and for instance, select white, and I've just got a pure white face. I think that's the fastest and easiest way to do that. You can always click on this bar to add more tags, and you can change the color of those tags, and you know, pretty much do whatever you want for creating a gradient on the face of the text there. I'll close that up. And then finally, you can add an outline. Uh, if you do so, the outline can affect the shading too, especially if the extrude style is set to shading, then the outline color here, red, you can see carries all the way through to the extrusion. But if you set the extrude style to gradient, the outline only affects the letters on the front. I'll crank up the width. And there we go. Now there is a text inspector and you can do some more things in the text inspector. You have access to the same face and outline parameters, but you can also add glow and drop shadow. For instance, if you want to add those parameters, you can do it 
in that section. But generally, it's designed that you can do everything you want to do right here in the Title Inspector. And that is a couple of quick tips on how to use Ripple Tools RT3D Text. Thanks for watching.